Welcome to Impact Makers Radio, featuring industry thought leaders sharing problem-solving insights to help grow your business and live the life you love. And here's your host, Stuart Andrew Alexander. Hi, and welcome to another Let's Talk Bankruptcy Conversation. And on this segment of the show, ladies and gentlemen, I'm really pleased because we've been working very hard to get her on the show. So I'm really pleased to have a bankruptcy attorney, Dipali Millie Joshi, commonly known as Millie to all her friends and colleagues, who is the owner of the Joshi Law Group all the way from San Diego in California. Now, Millie, who is considered to be an authority in the area of bankruptcy, will be talking to you today about the common mistakes when bankruptcy is unavoidable. So that sounds like a really interesting topic, and I'm sure she's going to share some great insights with us. So if you are one of the increasing amounts of people in the San Diego, California area, and you feel you can relate to today's topic, maybe it's relevant to your own situation. If that's the case, it might be a good idea for you just to take a break, log out of Facebook, stop Twittering and Instagramming or anything else you happen to be doing that may cause a distraction. And you might even want to grab yourself a notepad and pen and take some notes as we listen in to what Millie has to share with us today. So with that said, she's a very busy lady. Let's get her onto the show and pick her brain. Welcome to the show, Millie. Are you there? Yes, thank you for having me. You are so welcome, my dear. I know you're very, very busy, so let's not um, waste any time. Let's jump feet first in with our first question. If you could then, Millie, can you briefly describe the kinds of people who you serve and the various types of situations they find themselves in when they come to you for your help? So this is sort of a uh, trick question because I think there's an assumption that there is a certain or specific type of person or kind of person that usually ends up in a bankruptcy attorney's office. Good point. I like that. Go ahead. Well, usually it's, I mean, my clients are all types of people, all types of professions, everyday people, you know, blue collar workers, white collar workers, uh, just sometimes life happens. and for those who are not financially prepared or who have depleted their financial resources after being financially prepared, sometimes bankruptcy ends up being the only option. Right. So with that said then, Millie, and it, it goes without saying that anything you share with us from this point on today is not legal advice or legal assistance. It's purely for the purpose of disseminating information. Can we both agree on that, Millie? Oh, yes, Absolutely. Okay, so with that said, then, um, when those people who you just described come to you for your help, what's the most common misconception they have uh, about the common mistakes that um, sometimes happen in when bankruptcy is unavoidable? Well, one of the first things that we deal with is is uh, this um, preconceived shame. Mm. Um, Folks who come in to talk to me, they're they're in a place of feeling, you know, shameful, feeling like this is that they've failed somehow, and that this is this is the their only saving grace. But in reality, you know, bankruptcy may be on the horizon a lot sooner than those feelings emerge. So one of the common misconception, misconceptions is that um, you have to deplete all of your resources before considering bankruptcy as an option. Um, so for example, uh, a lot of people use up their retirement funds, mm. tap out their IRA or their 401k, and those are completely protectable funds when you go through a chapter seven or a chapter 13 bankruptcy. Mm. So are people doing that based on, um, advice from friends or things they're finding, you know, information they're finding online or bad advice? What was it? What's inspiring people to make those kinds of decisions? Well, I think it comes from this American value of self-reliance, mm-hmm. where you don't really talk to people about being in debt because it, there's some sort of shame around it, right. and you don't. Most people don't talk. To, uh, most people don't tell their friends and family if you know they have more money going out every month than they have coming in. If they do, it's in a joking and lighthearted way, but typically mm-hmm. not 
in a serious fashion where, hey, I'm in trouble. My credit card debt's out of control. Or, hey, I'm in trouble. I don't know how I'm going to make rent next month. People usually don't talk about those serious problems. And so when those problems start to accumulate over time, then you start doing desperate Start, start taking desperate actions like cashing out the mm-hmm. 401k you've been building for 20 years or tapping into um, or borrowing money from family members that you don't know how you're going to be able to pay back. Okay, Millie. So based on what you just shared with us and obviously keeping your client's confidentiality in mind, please share an example of how you've helped someone, um, an individual or maybe even a, a business owner who came to you for your help um, and how, you know, how would you have helped them or how would you go about helping them to overcome those challenges, those misconceptions you just described and what kind of transformational results you were able to or would be able to gain for them? So a couple of years ago, I had a family come to come to me to talk about bankruptcy um, and they they were your you know, stereotypical American family and that they had a, they had our, their own home, 2.4 or 2.4 kids, you know, a couple <laughs> of dogs, a couple right. of kids, <laughs> uh, wife worked part time, husband worked full time. Millie, I'm still to see a point four child. I'm just really intrigued of what that will look like one day. But anyway, continue. Uh, well, my, my accountant says <laughs> that each dog counts for a point two. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm all wise right now. So anyway, sorry for the interruption. Do continue. No, it's fine. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, they came to me and the economy had been tough and uh, the husband had been getting fewer hours at work. And so while in the heyday of the economic boom, but more than 10 years ago, mm. he was making you know lots of money with overtime and uh, you know, there's more work that could be done, right. but over the past 10 years, you know, the, the availability for work had depleted and there were times where he was laid off for a few months at a time or where he was only partially employed. And basically with the home, the cars, the kids, the, the dogs, there's a set value. Of, there's a set number of expenses that have to go out every month. And when the income is not coming in, you know, the, uh, eventually that negative, that negative net accrued. And after a couple of years, they had no idea how they were going to catch up behind on a couple of mortgage payments, behind on a car payment, only making minimum payments on credit cards. Have, and as a, as a last ditch effort, they depleted a $30,000 mm-hmm. 401k account. Um, which in which incurred tax debt, and so then tax debt was piled on top of that. And when they came to see me, the one thing that I really had wished was that they had come to see me six months earlier. Right. If they had come to see me six months earlier, then I would have been able to advise them on what bills to actually not pay. That's something that uh, it's one thing to not be able to pay your bills at all, and another thing to be hanging on by the minimum payment. If that minimum payment is causing you to fall behind on substantial debts like your mortgage or your car, then I think you're in a position where you need to talk to a bankruptcy attorney to prioritize which debts need to be paid first and which ones need to be dealt with by some sort of larger authority, uh, such as the bankruptcy court. And so Eventually, we were able to help them uh, get their finances in order, but the process was a lot more complicated than it would have been had they come to see me, you know, six months earlier. As a reminder, ladies and gentlemen, my esteemed guest today is bankruptcy attorney Dipali Millie Joshi, owner of the Joshi Law Group in San Diego, California. And today's topic is common mistakes when bankruptcy is unavoidable. Now, with that in mind, Joshi, and for those people who are out there listening right now and they're wanting to know more Please share one common but unknown pitfall that they need to be aware of, regardless of what situation they find themselves in. Well, depending on your state's exemption laws and whether or not they follow their state laws or the federal exemption laws, 
your property that you have is usually safe. So one of the miscon one of the biggest mistakes or pitfalls is assuming that if you file for bankruptcy, someone's going to come and take all of your stuff. Mm. That's not true. <laughs> there are lots of legal protections in place to protect your your basically your your core needs. So that you have something to start over with when your debts are wiped clean. Right. So, Josh, you've shared some great insights so far. So you've got me kind of curious. Um, how many years have you been a practicing bankruptcy attorney? A little over seven years. Okay. So in those seven years of being a bankruptcy attorney, when you think about all of those people who you've helped, which is possibly hundreds of people by now, I'm sure, um, What's the most important to you, to you as a person on a personal level, what's most important to you about being able to help your clients to achieve their desired outcomes? Well, I hate to use the uh, cliched term, giving them a fresh start, but I mean, truly, that's what bankruptcy is. Absolutely. Being, being able to take a person, a family, a couple, a business even, who sees no way forward with all the problems around them and being able to guide them through that process and allowing them to come up for, you know, a fresh breath of air mm. and see the future again, to be able to see the future and hope for the future and plan for the future again, that fresh start. I mean, it's, it's satisfying every single time. <laughs> Right. So when you think about those people who you help, the ones that you just described, those families who come to you and they don't see any future, they don't see any clarity, everything's cloudy, but you help them to see that, yeah, the the silver lining at the end of the cloud, you help them to gain clarity and to gain that fresh start, which I don't think is a cliche at all. You, That's what you do. When you think about that, how, you know, you're able to help people tremendously. How does that make you feel then, Millie? It makes me, it makes me feel like I've kept my soul a little bit longer being an attorney. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a profession that can very easily lead you <laughs> to, uh, to, you know, have a, a bit of, a bit of blackness, a bit of darkness grow within your soul. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, in that sense, it makes me feel like I'm actually, helping people and doing some good in the world and it's my own personal way of fighting against institutions that i think are not always fair to the average person mm. so fighting against those institutions who you feel um, are not always fair to the average person that, that's important to you yes uh, i mean for example credit card companies uh they tend to target they tend to target young students you know, college freshmen, they have booths set up all over, you know, college freshmen um, orientation areas. And they're soliciting these 18 year olds who are essentially kids, don't know anything about finances because they don't teach it in high school. They're you know, soliciting these kids to sign up for credit cards with 20 to 30 percent interest rates on them. And they're successful often. Mm. And so it just starts this it starts this cycle of credit and debt that is very difficult to overcome unless mm. you have a, a substantial form of income or a family member who is able to bail you out of that situation. Those are the kind of people you hear, you know, they're 30, 40, and they're still paying off those credit card debts when, you know, they started off with at 18, 19 years old, right? And sadly, there are people who commit suicide because of debt problems wow. every yeah. year. Yeah. Even so, young kids, 19, 20 year olds. While we're still talking about you, could you just spend a brief moment telling us a little bit about your background and especially your formal education and your experience as it relates to the topic of bankruptcy? Sure. Uh, well, I, Knew I wanted to be an attorney when I was very young. Uh, some, I got bit by the bug and it burrowed in and made me follow the legal path every step of the way. Mm -hmm. I did my undergraduate studies at Vanderbilt University and then went to law school in San Diego immediately after. Right. I earned my JD in two and a half years and then went on to um, 
get licensed in the state of California and also the state of Tennessee, which is where I'm from. Uh, and then after I, I started practicing as a bankruptcy attorney right away as soon as I was licensed primarily in California, because at the time, California was especially experiencing a rather high percentage of bankruptcy filings with the uh, concurrent housing crisis that had happened a couple of years earlier and was Mm -hmm. continuing to unfold. And at the time I started practicing, there was a lot of bankruptcy laws that were being tested by the current economic situation. So the law was rapidly evolving and changing, and there were new tools that were developing to be able to help people in debt and new laws that were unfolding that actually hurt people in debt if they didn't uh, go about bankruptcy the right way. And so just as soon as I started practicing uh, bankruptcy, really, the law piqued my interest, and it continues to. I just find the law endlessly fascinating. Um, and the ability that and its ability to help people, you know, that's just icing on the cake. And so I worked for a bankruptcy firm where I handled hundreds of cases. And then after a year, I decided to be brave enough to hang my own shingle and start Jersey Law Group. Yeah, and that that does take a lot of courage to make that step away from quote unquote safety and into the world of entrepreneurship. And it seems to me that you have certainly made the right decision based on yeah, this natural passion that you have. I just feel it coming through the airways. You you really have a natural passion for helping the people who you love to help the most. So we're so glad to have had you on the show today, um, Millie. So as we approach the end, I've just got two more questions for you in terms of the people who you can help those people who who reach out to you they find themselves facing bankruptcy what final thoughts would you like to impart with them before we finish up with our last question for today two things i tell every single client that has ever come into my office one thing is the first is whatever you think is going on i've seen worse and that is that is almost always true. <laughs> uh, there's that one. There's the one that's always the worst. But 99 out of 100 times, when someone's sitting in front of me and they're they're telling me how bad things have gotten, I'm there to tell you, look, I've seen worse. I've right. seen worse, and I've fixed worse. Right, because people always think their situation's unique, right? Well, I think it goes it goes along with that feeling of shame and holding it inside of yourself for so long. How how many problems have arisen and not being able to deal with it and sort of build this protective shell around yourself where everything outside of that shell is bad and terrible and you don't know how to deal with it. So coming out and actually talking to somebody about it, it's usually, it's a very cathartic step. The second point is there's no judgments. Seriously. If you, if you come and talk to me about what's going on, I have no judgments. You're, you're in a bad situation and I'm here to help you. So don't think that I'm going to be judging you while you're telling me about all of that. So yeah, the second tip is if you talk to an attorney that you feel comfortable with that's not going to judge you. Because at the end of the day, the bankruptcy laws are in place to give people a fresh start, right? It's not there to, they're not there to punish people, right? They're just literally just to give you a fresh start. Well, it's to give you a fresh start, but it's also, it balances the rights of debtors, Mm -hmm. those seeking a fresh start, and Mm -hmm. creditors. Because as many people as there are that really did just fall on bad times and need help in starting over, there are also folks that abuse the system. Right, right. Okay. commit fraud and then seek protection from the bankruptcy court. And mm. so for the for those reasons, the bankruptcy court does balance the rights of debtors and creditors. Gotcha. Fantastic. So if there is somebody out there who's been listening in to the show today or any time in the future, and they want to know more about the common mistakes when bankruptcy is unavoidable and i'm sure there are so many more but we are limited by time if that's the case how can they get in touch with you then millie um you can find me at joshilawgroup.com on facebook twitter and linkedin 
Okay, that's all we have time for today. Once more, as a reminder, we have been speaking with bankruptcy attorney Dipali Millie Joshi, commonly known as Millie to all her family and friends and colleagues out there. So thank you so much for sharing so generously with us today, Millie. You have certainly, without a doubt, um, I'd say 100% hands down, demonstrated that you are a true educator and trustworthy advisor for your client's success. So thank you. Thank you. You are so welcome. And I'd also like to take a moment to say a big thank you to you, the listener. Thank you for joining us on this insightful and informative discussion with one of the top bankruptcy attorneys in the San Diego, California area today. Again, her name is Dipali Millie Joshi. Make sure you do check her out. Give her a call. Visit her website. Whatever you do, I'm sure you'll most certainly be in good hands. So that's it for today, folks. Again, I am Stuart Andrew Alexander, and we'll be back shortly with some more leading bankruptcy professionals in this, our series of Let's Talk Bankruptcy Conversations. So until then, take care, have a great day, and we'll talk real soon. Thank you for tuning in to Impact Makers Radio. To listen to all past, present and future industry thought leaders and trendsetters, visit us at impactmakersradio.com.